Welcome to Ask Kalefi, the podcast that dives into real life problems that plumbing and HVAC technicians face in the field. We're your hosts from the Kalefi Tech Support Team. I'm Greg Tubbs. And I'm Dan Furkus. Welcome. We look forward to sharing some stories from our tech calls and using our background and expertise to make your days a little easier. Hey there, welcome back to the Ask Luffy podcast. Here we are, coming at you again with another episode. How are we doing, Dan? Yeah, we're doing good. Thanks for coming back. So we get a question or a request every so often for energy metering. Do you guys offer something that I can use to read consumption? Yeah, measure energy consumption. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of you may not even be familiar with it or aware that we offer it. I mean, it's a product we've had now for a while. Um, Last year or more has really taken hold. We're starting to see a lot of these going in, but that can take a heat meter or energy meter. The energy meter, the 7504 series. Yeah. So we offer it in a a variety of sizes and, and... Configurations. configurations yeah a lot a lot of options out there with it gives the building owner a, the ability to measure the energy being used you know you can measure energy for hot water you can measure energy for heating uh, space heating you know basically it's going to be a btu meter right it'll measure and record it all that information um, you can tap into it remotely if you have the, the data logger yeah, we have a data logger or user interface that allows you to tie into it. A user interface will convert it from Modbus to VACnet so you can tie it into a building automation system and, and watch the usage and be able to read and harvest the, the, the information off of it. Exactly. Nice thing about them is you, know, you can tie up to 250 of these meters together. That's a lot. It is. It you, is. For a large apartment building that... This is a great option. Yeah, it's perfect. You know, apartment building, commercial space, um, any application where you're going to have a common utility service, gas and electric service, um, this is going to give you the ability to measure the amount of BTUs used in a space. So, you know, when you look at calculating BTUs, is simple. You calculate your delta T between supply and return times your gallon per minute flow rate times 500 for straight water gives you the amount of BTUs used. And this a device will come with a supply temperature sensor and return temperature sensor right. and a well to install those in. Um, and that's how it's going to measure that delta T. So sure. that's going to give you your temperature difference. It also comes with a flow meter. Right. And we have varying sizes here, being able to measure different flow rates, essentially right. different CVs. So, um, a single jet flow meter, uh, half, three quarter, and one inch, and then the multi jet um, from uh, what is it, one inch all the way up to inch and a half. Yeah, yeah, and we we'll, we actually have the unit available up to eight inch flanged. That's, um, so for large commercial applications, we have the ability too. The sensors are going to come factory wired into the control, um, yes. and that's important. This control is calibrated, and to meet the standards, it has to have, it has to be tamper proof essentially. So it has to have those. The sensor leads are, I believe, they're twenty foot leads on each, and they're pre wired into the control, and they're secured in a way that they can't be tampered with. Right, and we'll get that question on occasion. Hey, can I extend the wires? You're changing the the resistance values then. Which is going to throw that off. Right, and yeah. Calibration is going to be different, and right. we don't really have a way of calibrating it, unfortunately. No, that's all done at the factory. That's all. And it, rightfully so, right? Yeah. Because, again, trying to keep it from being tampered with. Right. So we had a local project that we had these installed in, and it was a great opportunity. It was fun to go out on that project. Yeah, you got to go out and see it in action and actually help the contractor set them up, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, it was fun. So it was... Um, a multifamily project. Um, it was an existing buildings, and there were two eight-family apartment buildings okay. that were heated off of two boilers. The sure. boilers were located in the basement of one eight-family. Supply and return piping went underground into the basement of the second. Wow. Um, and then was piped throughout that building. And they were, you know, were small apartments. Um, sure. Hydronic uh, fin tube baseboard. 
for heating. Okay. Um, but previous to that, the building owner was paying all utilities. So gotcha. heat, heat was included. So what that owner had done is he had upgraded to high-efficient boilers. He had put an individual electric water heater in the basement of each one of the apartments. Okay. So you know now that you know, the electric was separated, but the gas wasn't. Okay. So then in each one of the apartment units, they installed a can take a heat meter. Okay. And it was relatively easy because you know being common piping, yeah. in you know each basement of the, the apartment complex had basements. So in the basement, you know it was common piped throughout the unit, and there was a zone valve tied to a thermostat for each of the apartments. Sure. So after the zone valve, he installed his supply temperature sensor on the leaving return loop from the apartment going back to the main he installed his return temperature sensor so that gave him the ability to calculate his delta t and then on the return side he installed the water meter and the water meter calculated his flow rates how many gallons per minute was flowing through that through that loop when it was heating and it was interesting because you know we were there and um, we were running it and it was calculating the delta t it was calculating the flow rate you know was anywhere you know he had variable speed pumps on on the boilers, so it was anywhere from, you know, maybe three quarters to one and a quarter gallon per minute of flow okay. through the unit, and yep. then it was measuring the temperature difference, and it was telling us how many BTUs that unit was using in heating. Very nice. <laughs> and then they had um, tied a communication wire from each one of the Contecas back to the boiler room um, to one of the data loggers. Okay. So. We were able to go in there, you know, we had to assign each one an address. Okay. And again, you can put up to 250 Contecas on a single system. Sure, you only had 16 there to Yeah, we had 16. Together. Right. Um, and then at the data logger, we were able to um, search and found each one of the addresses. Okay. And then it was able to tell us, you know, how many BTUs it was using. And it's going to record that. And at the... You know, end of the month, the, the building owner can tie into that. He can tie a laptop computer into it. He didn't have a building automation system. Sure, but he could go down and plug in with his laptop and, and read all that info. Right, pull that information off. And and record it and, and log it. Well, yeah, and then it gave him the ability to look at how many BTUs they used and separate and say, okay, unit one used you know, X amount of BTUs and unit two used X amount. And then he was able to take his gas bill and break that out and bill each tenant for the amount of BTUs they used that month. Sure. Well, that's pretty handy to be able to do that. Yeah, it was pretty interesting. I mean, you look at going from, you know, having, from paying the gas bill, which you know how rentals are. You pay the gas bill and you drive by and the apartment's 80 degrees and the windows are open. Oh, yeah. I I'm familiar with plenty of those situations. So now when the tenant's paying the utility bill, you know, you're going to see the thermostat set lower. You're going to see the windows closed because that, you know, that's affecting them directly. It certainly is. They got to pay for it. So they're going to have a little more care in it. Yeah. And the other option he would have had would have been to have the municipality come out and install a gas meter for each unit, which sure. is going to be a big investment. And then so put a, boiler in the basement of each of the units yeah separating separate boilers so that's 16 boilers 16 boilers that's 16 times the maintenance yep um yeah it's 16 gas meters gas piping throughout the entire building it's a huge labor Um, venting would have been next to impossible yeah you know because either you're going high efficient which they're you know the side-by-side apartments didn't give a lot of venting location you know, if you're mid efficient, they didn't have chimneys or class B vents to vent them, so right. that wouldn't have been a great option as well. Um, but this allowed him to complete his task. You know, he he made the investment in two new boilers, and he's able to allow the tenants now to pay their utility bill. So, you know, he's recovering recovering that as a re- return on investment, so to speak. Yeah, that's a great option to be able to do that. Those jobs are always fun to go to, weren't they? The the apartments. <laughs> You know, to try and troubleshoot. Yeah, they are. Because, you know, the zone valve is either up in the apartment someplace, buried under the zone, uh, the baseboard right. in the cabinet. Yep. Or they're in the divided up basement somewhere, and you right. don't always have access to it. Right. Yeah, this one was really easy. This was a like a perfect setup for the Kanteka. Nice. Um, but you could do this in a commercial application. I mean, you... 
you know, had they had, um, you know, common water heaters and they had, you know, supply lines going out to, you know, each of the apartment, they could have done metering on domestic hot water. There's four additional inputs where they could tie in, you know, for gas usage to help measure gas usage or any anything, you know, a pulse signal will indicate. Great. Well, I think that pretty well covers it, doesn't it? It's uh, it's an overview. I mean, it, yeah, it's a general overview of, of the product. And as we start getting more questions and seeing things, we'll be sure to share them with you, one hundred percent. We sure will. Well, till next time. Thank you for tuning in. If you ever need help, please feel free to contact our tech support team anytime at techsupport.us at kalefi.com. Or call us during our business hours at 7.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Central Time at 414-238-2360.